Uh, this lecture is going to be about the methodology. It's kind of an overview of the methodology that's happening in the actual software um, behind the scenes. So I'm going to introduce you to um, a quick breakdown of the statistical framework that's used in RMCRFA and how that works to develop our stage frequency curve with uncertainty. So in this lecture, we've got three learning objectives, four, in fact, discuss the basic framework of the stochastic simulation, describe the two kinds of uncertainty, which I'm probably several of you are already familiar with, and we're going to review Monte Carlo methodology, which may or may not be a familiar concept, and then we're going to talk about how RMC-RFA um, performs simulations. Uh, this is a guidance document that we've mentioned a number of times in this course, and it's a really useful document. Um, it's uh, the inflow volume-based stochastic simulation framework um, that Hayden Smith developed, and he was the, one of the main authors for this document as well. Um, the procedures that are outlined in, in, this, um, in these lectures can be found in this document. So if you want to dive deeper, this is probably a really good place for you to go. And that can be found on the RMC website, and the link is shown there on that slide. Before I get started, I'm going to go over the basic framework of a stochastic simulation used to develop a stage frequency curve. And there's really only two options. First, there's a precipitation-based approach. And in this method, we would sample precipitation volumes from a precipitation frequency curve. We would scale the sample precipitation depth to the observed storm shape. And then we would distribute the precipitation over a rainfall runoff model, such as HEC, HMS. The results of the modeling are an inflow hydrograph. And then <laughs> uh, we're going to route that through a reservoir routing model. And then we're going to obtain a peak stage. And because all of these inputs are uncertain, we would use multiple storm patterns and multiple inflow hydrograph shapes and variations in our hydrologic basin parameters, such as loss rates. And then we would have um, also variations in our reservoir operations that we would want to investigate as well. And this whole procedure would be repeated many, many, many times to create a series of peak stages that define the reservoir stage frequency curve. And this method, unfortunately, is very computationally intensive. Luckily, there is a second option that is less computationally intensive. So in this method, we would sample inflow volumes from a volume frequency curve. The inflow volume is used to scale an inflow um, hydrograph shape. The scaled hydrograph is routed through the reservoir model, which is repeated many times to create a series of peak stages that can develop um, our, or estimate our reservoir stage frequency curve with uncertainty. And as we saw in the, precipita the precipitation-based approach, the inputs have uncertainty that must be accounted for with variation in the input parameters. Luckily, this method is much simpler and easier to perform, and this is the approach that's used in RMC RFA. All right, so I mentioned that we would talk about the two types of uncertainty, so let's do that now. There's two main types that affect the study of hydrologic hazard. The first is natural variability, or aleatory uncertainty, and the second is knowledge uncertainty, or epistemic uncertainty. Natural variability describes the randomness of natural processes, such as fluctuations in precipitation or temperature. It's important to understand that while we can't reduce uncertainty from natural variability, we can understand it. The second type of uncertainty is knowledge uncertainty, and it describes our lack of knowledge or lack of data. Knowledge uncertainty can be reduced with further study and measurement. For example, in the plot on the left, we can see natural variability of an inflow, of inflow volume over time. We can't reduce the amount of variability that was observed in the system, but we can understand it by observing it. And so we have plotted it here so we can look at what that uncertainty looks like. Examples of knowledge uncertainty can encompass things like how accurate our hydrologic model is at predicting flood events, whether a truly major flood has occurred in our watershed before, how closely a gauge was able to measure a true flow or precipitation value, or how much gauge data we have available. So sometimes we have a limited amount of, we're limited, our knowledge is limited by how much gauge data there is available. These are examples of knowledge uncertainty and they can be reduced by further study um, and measurement. So let's look at one more example that kind of really hones in on what we're, what we're doing here today. 
there are two types of uncertainty that are accounted for in RMC RFA. When we enter the user defined volume frequency curve that we developed in best fit, we discuss the natural variability of inflow volumes. So that's that um, mode curve. That's the natural variability is described in that curve. The confidence interval or uncertainty bounds describe the knowledge uncertainty. So that's why we can narrow that when we do additional study. Before we move on, I want to define how uncertainty is represented on the plots we use. For example, the flow frequency curves used in RFA display a user input curve, the black curve, and a confidence interval, which is shaded in blue. In statistical terms, we think that the black user input curve is the likely distribution to represent the population of inflow volumes. However, there is a 90% chance that the population or parent distribution could truly reside within these shaded bounds. And there's a 10% chance that the parent distribution could be outside these bounds. So how do we actually address uncertainty? A common way to combine uncertainty is with something called a Monte Carlo simulation. I know Monte Carlo sounds really exotic and maybe a little frightening. So you're probably thinking that it must be complicated, but it's really pretty simple. The key idea is that Monte Carlo techniques are used to combine uncertainty. We have uncertainty in each of our four main inputs, including the volume frequency curve, the starting stage of a reservoir, and the hydrograph shape. And Monte Carlo techniques allow us to combine these uncertainties so that we can in turn quantify the uncertainty in our output stage frequency curve. In this presentation, I'll break down the process of a Monte Carlo analysis and the basics of developing a stage frequency curve using RMC RFA. The examples provided in this lecture are primarily geared towards developing stage frequency hazard curves for periodic assessments and semi-quantitative risk assessments. However, RMC RFA has many other applications. Okay, in order to construct uncertainty bounds for reservoir stage frequency estimates, RFA employs a two-looped nested Monte Carlo framework. This strategy of having two loops allows us to separate the natural and knowledge uncertainty so that we can calculate and portray the magnitude of the uncertainty. This allows us to decide on investments, such as whether we want to invest on reducing knowledge uncertainty to get a better decision. The outer loop consists of many realizations and simulates the knowledge uncertainty in the inflow volume frequency distribution. The inner loop addresses the natural variability of the reservoir stage by simulating many thousands of flood events. Instead of using fixed values, RMC RFA treats four variables as random variables with random sources of uncertainty, including the seasonal occurrence of the flood event, the antecedent reservoir stage, inflow volume, and the inflow hydrograph shape. In the next several slides, I will go through each step of the two-loop simulation process. In an RMC RFA simulation, the outer loop is run once per realization. RFA begins with a user input volume frequency curve shown in black. The user input curve is bootstrapped, which means taking n random samples from the inflow volume distribution, the black curve, and fitting a new sample frequency curve to the random samples. In RFA, the effective record length of the frequency curve is used to determine the number of samples that's needed from the black inflow volume frequency curve or, uh, for the bootstrap. For example, if the effective record length of your observed inflow data is 75 years, RFA will randomly sample 75 values from the volume frequency curve. These 75 values are randomly sampled and they're used to calculate a mean, standard deviation, and skew for the sample. The new mean, standard deviation, and skew parameters define the sample inflow volume frequency curve shown in red. So you can see that those red samples that were taken is now represented by the new distribution, which is the red curve. In the outer loop of an RFA simulation, the A new red sample inflow volume frequency curve is generated for each of the realizations selected in the RFA model, whether you choose 100 realizations or 10,000 realizations. This process simulates knowledge uncertainty in the inflow volume distribution. The inner loop pr procedure simulates natural variability uncertainty in flood events. For each of those new bootstrapped inflow volume frequency curves developed in the outer loop, 
an inner loop realization is run. The inner loop includes four steps. Use stratified sampling to get 10,000 inflows. For each sample, randomly sample other hydrologic variables, including the starting month, starting reservoir stage, and inflow hydrograph shape. Scale the inflow hydrograph to the sample volume and simulate reservoir routing to compute a peak stage for each inflow. And then calculate the probability of stages using the total probability theorem. When sampling inflow volumes in the inner loop, RFA uses importance and stratified sampling approach. In practical terms, for each new red inflow volume frequency curve, 50 evenly spaced bins are applied along the probability axis. Then 200 inflows are sampled from each bin. Lastly, each of the 10,000 flow volumes sampled are used to perform a reservoir routing simulation to produce a peak stage. The 10,000 peak stages are then all sorted and ranked, and one possible stage frequency curve is generated. The stage frequency curves from all the realizations are used to compute the confidence intervals. And this approach allows for very fast computing and provides well-defined curves, in less in the, especially in the less frequent end of the AEP scale. Okay. So I'll introduce the basic procedure included in RMCRFA stochastic simulations with an example of a single instance of the inner loop. First, one of the red inflow volume frequency curves developed in the outer loop is sampled using importance and stratified sampling procedures. For this example, the inflow volume sampled is 375,000 CFS. Next, the starting month is randomly selected. Starting month sampling is based on the relative frequency of storms determined from the observed period of record inflow data. In this example, the starting month was May. And you can see that in this particular watershed, May was more frequent to have floods than any other month in the year. Next, a starting stage is randomly selected for the reservoir from the stage duration curve that corresponds to the, the starting month that we just selected on the, in the previous, um, previous slide. Stage duration curves are developed for each of the months from the period of record stage data. In this example, a starting stage of 724.4 feet is selected from the May stage duration curve. So let me just run that by you again. So we randomly sampled what month the flood was going to come from, and then we picked the stage duration curve that corresponded to that month, and then we randomly picked a stage from it. And that is how we're going to do our starting stage. That's what the starting stage is going to be for our reservoir. The last step in the inner loop is to randomly select the inflow hydrograph shape. RFA allows the user to input as many hydrograph shapes as desired, and the user assigns a weight to each hydrograph, which determines the relative frequency that each hydrograph will be stochastically sampled during a given solution or simulation. In this example, six hydrograph shapes were input by the user, including observed hydrograph shapes and the PMF hydrograph shape. Using engineering judgment, each of these six hydrographs were, was thought to be equally likely and was given a weight of one. In this example, hydrograph shape number five was randomly selected and this hydrograph will now be used to scale the inflow volume sampled in step one. After the inflow volume, starting month, starting reservoir stage, and inflow hydrograph shape are randomly sampled, an inflow hydrograph is scaled based on the sampled volume. So remember the very first thing we did was sample a volume, and so now we're gonna scale up our hydrograph to that volume. The scaled hydrograph is then routed through the reservoir model using simple mod pools routing, also known as level pool routing. The sampled starting stage is used, and for each time step, the inflow volume is compared to the user input stage storage discharge rating curve to determine the reservoir stage and the reservoir discharge. So now, if we look at this output plot, the results of a simple routing procedure for our working example are shown on this plot. As you can see, the reservoir stage is shown in green, the inflow hydrograph is shown in blue, and the reservoir discharge is shown in red. In this plot, you can see the evidence of several of our randomly sampled variables, including the, starting, the sampled starting stage of 724 feet, the scaled inflow hydrograph shape number five, and the inflow volume of 375,000 CFS. 
the computed peak stage for our working example is 780.5 feet. And remember that the process used for our working example will be conducted 10,000 times for each realization. So there's a red curve that's de developed for each realization, and then this process is done 10,000 times for each of those realizations. Ideally, the final stage frequency hazard curve should demonstrate a good fit to the empirical frequency distribution. So again, what we're saying there is it should match our observed data. The final stage frequency hazard curve produced from a full uncertainty RMC RFA simulation with at least 1,000 realizations, hint, that's a number that's important for the post quiz, um, provides a robust method to estimate the probability of events much less frequent than the observed record. To sum up, the inflow volume-based stochastic simulation framework in RMC RFA produces reliable and accurate stage frequency hazard curves with an uncertainty interval that can produce co comparable results to more complex precipitation-based methods in a fraction of the computing time. <laughs>